Welcome to video 7.1, where today we are going to be talking about importing data into MongoDB. In this video, we are going to be looking at three different approaches to getting data into MongoDB. First, we're going to use a script full of Mongo commands and JSON objects to directly load data into MongoDB. In the second example, we'll be importing a JSON file using the Mongo import command. And in the third example, we will be importing a CSV file using the Mongo import command. For these demonstrations, we have three different files and file formats. The first being students.js, which is just the data that I made up in our previous MongoDB lecture. Second, we have reviews.json, which is a data set of Amazon reviews of musical instruments that I found on Kaggle. And then the third data set is uscounties.csv, also from Kaggle, and should be pretty familiar to you from the uh, previous work that we have been doing. And of course, the first thing we need to do is copy the data to the server. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, I currently have these three files stored on my computer in c colon backslash data backslash mongo. So reviews.json, students.js, and uscounties.csv. So let me go ahead and launch PSFTP. Okay, I'm gonna type open, and then the name of our MongoDB server. I'm gonna log in using my credentials. And then at this point, I can just execute the uh, put commands to upload these files. So I'm gonna start with put c colon backslash data, data backslash mongo backslash students.js. That's a very small file, so that should only take a second to upload. Next, put c colon backslash data backslash mongo backslash reviews.json. That's a slightly larger file, so it's taking just a little bit longer to upload. And then last but not least, we'll do uscounties.csv. All right, so now all three of our files are uploaded to the MongoDB server. I'm gonna switch over to my PuTTY window where I've already connected to MongoDB. And we can see here I am in my home slash mgrimes directory. And if I do an ls to list the contents of just this directory, we see reviews.json, students.js, and uscounties.csv, the three files that we just uploaded. The first approach to getting data into MongoDB is to use the load command within our Mongo client to pass in a JavaScript file that is full of Mongo uh, commands and JSON objects. So I'm gonna drop back to uh, PuTTY and just first let's see what this uh, JavaScript file looks like. And we see it's really just a collection of db.students.insert and then our JSON object that we want to uh, insert into MongoDB. So this is just exactly the same type of command that we would normally be typing at the uh, Mongo client command line. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Mongo client and I'm going to connect to my mg underscore uhdb database, which uh, recall until we write something to this database, the database doesn't actually exist. As soon as we write something, however, uh, MongoDB is going to go ahead and create that database. So to load this data, I'm just going to type load, then open parentheses, a single quote, and then the path to the uh, .js file. And MongoDB in return says true, like this successfully uh, uh, loaded the data. If we say show databases now, we see that MongoDB has created our mg underscore uhdb database. And if we sh say show collections, we see we have the students collection, uh, which is what this JavaScript file was inserting data into. And if we were to do a simple query like db.students, dot find, we see that we have some, uh, some data here. We can do a slightly more sophisticated uh, query here if we wanted to find 
all of the students with a classification of senior. We could do something like this, and then we only see the three students that have a status of senior. Of course, we could tell MongoDB that we only want to project certain attributes. So we could uh, say, you know, we don't want to project ID, uh, but we do want to project name and uh, let's say state. The second approach we're going to take for getting data into MongoDB is to import a JSON file using the Mongo import command. Now, by default, Mongo import wants a JSON file that adheres to the version 2.0 specification of JSON. Uh, we'll talk in just a moment about how to adapt this command to, uh, to use older JSON style files. But the basic format of this command is just Mongo import and then two dashes, and then db equals, where we're gonna specify the name of the database, uh, then two dashes, collection equals, and specify the name of the collection, and then two dashes, file equals, and then the name of the JSON file. So in this case, since we're loading reviews.json, and we want to put that into a collection called reviews in our mguhdb database, this is what that command is going to look like. So let's flip right back over to our uh, MongoDB server and give this a try. So the Mongo import command does not run from inside the Mongo client. We actually run this at the command line of our Linux server. So I'm going to exit out of the Mongo client. Um, and to give you an idea of what this JSON file looks like, I'm going to type the command more and more in Linux just uh, shows you the contents of a text file. So I'm going to say more reviews.json. And we see uh, we have a, a properly formatted JSON document starting with the uh, curly brace and an attribute of reviewer ID and then a value for that and an attribute called ASIN, which is the uh, Amazon identifier for every product, and then a value for that, the name of the reviewer, uh, and then the contents of the review, the, uh, the ranking or the rating they gave the product on the five point scale, a summary of the review, and some other attributes like that. So we have tons and tons of these reviews here. I'm gonna hit Control C to get out of uh, more without having to see uh, everything that is in this file. And then go ahead and just type the command that we need to do to import this into MongoDB. So I'm gonna say mongo import dash dash db equals mg underscore uhdb. And this would just be whatever the name of your particular database is. Then a dash dash collection and we're going to call our collection reviews and then dash dash file equals slash home mgrimes reviews dot json and when we hit enter it takes it just a moment and it says we successfully imported 10,261 documents successfully zero documents failed to import and recall that every object in this JSON file is a document in our MongoDB database. So I'm going to start my Mongo client again. And if we were to forget to specify what database it is we, uh, we want to connect to, and we just launch the client without specifying a database, we can connect to the database after the fact using the use command. Okay, so you see we have our MGUHDB there. I say use mg underscore uhdb. Now we're connected to that database. If I say show collections, we should have the student collection that we just uh, uh, created in the previous example. And now we should have a new collection called reviews that we just created uh, when we ran the Mongo import command. And there are the collections we expect. 
So of course, if we wanted to see all the data we just imported, we could say db.reviews.find and just pass no objects into the find command. And uh, we're gonna see a little bit scroll across the screen, but notice that uh, MongoDB only shows us a, a few of the documents by default, and we have to type IT to get to the next, uh, next page of documents. Now, if we wanted to change this behavior and be able to see more than just one screen full of data at a time, we can, we can change the behavior that our Mongo client is going to exhibit here uh, by typing this command, uh, dbquery.shell uh, batch size equals, and then whatever large number of, uh, of records we want to see. So let's just say 20,000. That's going to be uh, quite a lot of data coming across. And now if we did uh, db.reviews.find, it's actually going to show us all 10,261 documents that are currently in this collection. Now, of course, we can refine our query a little bit. So let's uh, imagine that we only wanted to see uh, reviews that left five stars. So we'll get rid of all the one, two, three, and four star reviews. So I'm just going to pass this object into my find command uh, and say overall is five. And when we do that, we're going to see only our five star reviews come across. And there's, there's really way, way too much content on the screen here. So I'm gonna pass in another object to project only certain attributes that we are interested in. Um, first of all, I am not going to project the ID, but uh, I am going to project the uh, ASIN, uh, the overall rating they gave, and a summary of the review. So when we run this, we should see, yeah, this is a little bit uh, easier to read. And so if we scroll up a little bit, what we see here are all of our products that have uh, at least one five-star review and the summary, just that first line of the review for all of those five-star reviews. Now, one product that I was particularly interested in had an Amazon ID number of uh, this value right here. So let's imagine we only wanted to see the reviews for this particular product. Our query would look uh, something like this, right? So we have these uh, five five-star reviews for this product. Here's the summary line for each one of these reviews. And here's something really interesting. If we take this Amazon ID number, and just search for this in Amazon. So I'm just copying and pasting this value for uh, ASIN. We can actually find the product that is uh, in this data set that we're working in. So it's this uh, uh, Epiphone SG guitar. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Now, I mentioned earlier that if you had an older style of JSON file, you have to add just one extra uh, argument to the Mongo import command, and that is to say dash dash legacy, and that will allow Mongo import to uh, import a JSON version 1.0 file. And if you're downloading the data sets that come with the seven databases in seven weeks book, uh, note that the Mongo cities 100,000.json file is the older version of the, uh, of the JSON file. So you'll need to import that using this legacy flag. And then finally, we can also use the mongo import command to import a CSV file. So it's very similar to importing a JSON file. We say mongo import dash dash db and the name of our database, dash dash collection and the name of the collection that we want to import into, dash dash file and the file name of our CSV file. So, so far exactly like importing a JSON file except now we say dash dash type equals CSV for comma separated values, and then dash dash header line, which tells the Mongo import command that the first line in this CSV file is going to be describing the name of names of the attributes. So let's switch back over to our MongoDB server and take a look at this. Now again, we run the mongo import command from the Linux command line, not from our Mongo client. So I'm going to exit out of that. 
Um, just so we're familiar with it, let's uh, take a look at this uh, uscounties.csv file. And this should look uh, pretty familiar. Uh, just because our screen is not wide enough here, we have some uh, line wraps going on. But right here at the top, we have our first row that has all of the names of our attributes. And then we have all of the data corresponding to those attributes in a comma separated format. So this data should look pretty familiar to you at this point in the semester. So we're gonna say mongo import dash dash db equals mg uhdb dash dash collection equals us counties. And we can call that whatever we want, but this is a good description of what this is. Uh, file is home mgrimes uscounties.csv. And this time we say dash dash type equals csv and then dash dash header header line which is going to say that the first line in this csv file is the list of attributes okay so we've successfully imported 3220 documents so i'm going to get back into our mongo client and if we say show collections we see we now have us counties and let's uh, look up a county. We'll say db.uscounties.find. And let's find counties that have a name of Harris County. Okay, so we've got some stuff there. Let's, uh, let's project a smaller subset of attributes. So we're not going to get the uh, ID, but let's get the county and the state and you see in the united states we have two counties named harris county harris county georgia and harris county texas all right so that's it for our quick look at a couple of different ways we can import data into mongodb uh, note that there are of course several other options for getting data in and out of mongodb uh, like mongo dump mongo restore mongo export and the one we just looked at mongo import Another thing to be aware of is that there are multiple ways to get data onto your MongoDB server in the first place. So it's not just using PSFTP. We could also do something like using the wgit command or a curl to download files directly to our Linux server. And just one final piece of advice to part with is if you're ever having trouble figuring out exactly how to do something like this, Google the name of the command and what you're trying to do and it is almost certain that there are going to be people who have experienced the same problem and ultimately have found a solution. So a lot of great information available on the internet if you look for it. So that's it for lecture 7.1. Go forth and do great things.